One of the most common questions I see is, how can I train to carry a heavy pack? And unfortunately, like many things in the trekking world, the usual advice just isn't much help. So common answers like train with a heavy backpack, build up slow and get your pack fitted are really nothing more than just common sense. And in my eyes, they don't really do so much to solve the actual problem. So the goal for this video today is to go beyond those answers that have been shared hundreds of times and give you some clear, effective and practical strategies that can help prepare you for the rigors of heavy pack trekking. So to start with, we have pack walking. Now obviously this is the most specific way you can train to carry a heavy pack. But before you just load up your backpack and hit the trail, let's go into a little bit more detail. Because like with any type of training, a little bit of planning here and a little bit of structure can go an incredibly long way to increasing the effectiveness of your workouts and also reducing the risk of injury. So when you're looking at your pack walking, you've got two types of walking you want to be including. To start with, we have trail pack walking. Now this is simply just going out on your normal training hikes and loading up your pack. But with this, the main concern is doing too much too soon. So when you're planning this out, there are a few principles you want to keep in mind. Number one is when you're going on your training hikes, you don't want to be increasing your distance of your hikes week by week by more than 20%. Now this is really important for reducing the risk of injury, avoiding any spikes in your training load, and making sure you're not pulling up sore, stiff, and painful after these hikes. Number two is when you're loading up your pack, you want to start with just 5% of your total body weight. Now, too many people jump way too um, deep into this way too soon. And again, they're pulling up sore, sore, stiff, and in pain. And we really want to avoid that. Now, every four weeks, you want to increase that pack weight by 5%. So that's adding a little bit extra stimulus and really, really pushing the body. And when you are loading up your pack, please avoid trying to use weight plates or dumbbells or anything that's really, really dense. Now, these things just don't sit well on the back and they really don't distribute the weight as you would be when you're hiking. So instead, I usually recommend trying to fill up water bottles, bags of rice, or even dog food in your pack, and then packing that out the rest of the pack with towels. And that way it'll sit right on your body and you'll avoid any chance of getting that annoying back pain, which those other things can bring you. So the second type of pack walking you wanna be including in your training is overloaded pack walking. Now this basically involves adding, wearing a pack which is even heavier than you would be wearing on your trail. The idea behind this is to overload your muscles, add a whole bunch of extra stimulus to get them incredibly strong and incredibly resilient. But obviously this isn't practical or safe to be doing on your longer track training. So the answer here is to be doing this in interval training. So by breaking up your work with regular rest intervals, you can increase the stimulus on your body in a practical and effective way, which is also incredibly time efficient. You want to find a hill or a set of stairs that'll take you 10 or more minutes to climb. Now this hill wants to be literally as steep as you can possibly find, so really, really dig around and try and find a good one. Next, you want to fill your pack with 10 to 25% of your body weight in water bottles. And it's going to be your choice on that, depending on how fit you are, how strong you are, and where you are in your current training program. Next, you're going to climb the hill at an intensity where your legs are going to be burning, but you're not going to be getting too puffed cardiovascularly, and you can still more or less carry a conversation the entire way. If you are getting incredibly puffed, this is going to be a bit of a different workout and it's not going to be exactly what we're aiming for. Once you get to the top, you're going to empty all your water bottles out and then return down the bottom. Now this is really important because when you're talking downhill, the knees can take a whole bunch of extra pressure. When we're doing this overloaded stuff with so much weight in your back, your knees can really get ground out if you're doing repeats down, downwards with a heavy pack. So fill your, um, empty your water bottles at the top and then fill them at the bottom. And then you're going to repeat that three to four times. Now, with every, as with every other type of training, progression is key here. So you don't want to be doing the same thing week to week, or you just won't get any fitter or stronger. So each week you do it, you want to alternate between adding an extra repetition on your hill and adding 5% of your body weight onto your pack. And then next up, we've got strength training. So we all know that strength training is a great way to improve the strength of your legs. But... <sighs> And then next up, we've got strength training. So we all know that strength training is a great way to improve the strength of your legs. And obviously, any strength you get in your legs is going to transfer into helping you carry that heavy pack on the trail. But this goes beyond just doing a few squats and lunges. 
And to get the best benefits out of strength training, you need both structure and progression. So this will ensure that you're continually progressing and getting stronger while also reducing your risk of injury as you go through. So as a really basic program for any tracker who's trying to get ready to carry a heavy pack, you can go through a simple three-step progression. Now the first phase of your strength training is something that's called your preparatory phase, where it's basically you're just learning the movements, getting your body used to the exercise and building some base strength. What you want to be doing here is choosing a few particular and specific exercises for your legs and you want to be doing four sets at 10 to 12 repetitions with about a 90 second rest in between each one. So the prep phase will go anywhere between four and eight weeks depending on how much time you have in your training and also what your training experience is. Once you've gotten through this prep phase we move into something that's called the strength phase. And this is where we take the same movements we've been doing, which we've learned and proficient at, and we load them up a little bit heavier so we can get the best gains in both strength and injury reduction. So you're gonna take the same moves you've been doing, add a little bit of weight, so you'll be doing six to eight repetitions, four sets, and you're gonna increase the rest up to two minutes in between each set. Now it's really important here that you do have that extra rest because if you don't fully recover in between sets, it's gonna minimize your strength gains and obviously we don't be wanting that. Now in this rest period, you can do things like core work, mobility, or even some upper body stuff just to fill out that gap, but just make sure you have the two minutes in between each leg exercise you do. So again, that strength training phase is gonna go anywhere between about four, eight, or even 12 weeks, depending on how long you're having your training program. Now, once we've done that, we're gonna move into something called the muscular endurance phase. So here we're gonna be taking all that significant strength that you've built during that strength phase and turn into specific trekking fitness. Now, this phase is traditionally what most trekkers tend to stick to, but you probably only really need between about four and six weeks here to dedicate to it. And if you haven't spent the time building that strength beforehand, you're really gonna be minimizing the benefit at this stage. So do make sure you do that beforehand. Now, in this stage, what you're gonna be doing is taking the same exercises you've been working on so far and change the repetitions to 20 repetitions per exercise. 